Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 
We are gathered at a very special worship service, remembering and focusing on those who have given their lives in service to this country. It is a time of celebration for their lives and their sacrifice, but also a time of heart-rending remembrance for their sacrifice. We start with a special prayer for Henry Pendergrass, who went home this morning feeling very ill. If we could, let us take a moment and pray for our brother Henry. Father God, we thank you for our wonderful rector, our senior pastor, a friend, a lover of us and of you. Lord, we know that he has been struggling mightily. We ask you for peace, for healing, for grace, for care, for life, for him. In your son's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We also want to welcome our brothers from Teen Challenge. We always hope that Christ Church is a second home of love and support for them. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us remember before God and commend to His safekeeping those who have died for their country in war, especially for those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure and who we shall name in this service. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will oh, remember, remember them. them. be with you. Let us pray. 
ever-living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Judges, chapter 7, beginning at the first verse, at page 206 in your pew Bible. Then Jerubbabel, that is, Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Herod. And the camp of Midian was north of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, The people with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel boast over me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return home and hurry away from Mount Gilead. Then 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Take them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. And any one of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, shall go with you. And any one of whom I say to you, this one shall not go with you, shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, Every one who laps the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set by himself. Likewise, everyone who kneels down to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hands to their mouths, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people knelt down to drink water. And the Lord said to Gideon, With the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and give Midianites into your hand. Let all the others go, every man, to his home. So the people took provisions in their hands and their trumpets, and he set all the rest of Israel, every man to his tent, but retained the 300 men. And the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. That same night the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you are afraid to go down, Go down to the camp with Pura, your servant, and you shall hear what they say. And afterward, your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Pura, his servant, to the outposts of the armed men who were in the camp. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the people of the east lay along the valley like locusts in abundance. And their camels were without number as the sand that is on the seashore in abundance. When Gideon came, behold, a man was telling a dream to his comrade. And he said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And behold, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent and struck it so that it fell and turned it upside down so that the tent lay flat. And his comrade answered, this is no other than the sword of Gideon, the son, son of Joash, a man of Israel. God has given into his hand Midian and all the camp. As soon as Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped. And he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has given the host of Midian into your hand. And he divided 300 men into three companies and put trumpets into the hands of all of them and empty jars with torches inside the jars. And he said to them, look at me and do likewise. When I come to the outskirts of the camp, do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then blow the trumpets also on every side of the camp and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him 
came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch when they had just set the watch. And they blew the trumpets and smashed the jars that were in their hands. And then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the jars. They held in their left hands the torches and in all their right hands the trumpets to blow. And they cried out, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Every man stood in his place around the camp, and all the army ran. They cried out and fled. When they blew three hundred trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his comrade and against all the enemy. And the army fled as far as Bethshetah toward Zerah, as far as the border of Abelmelah to Tabath. And the men of Israel were called out from Naphtali and from Asher and from all Manasseh. And they pursued after Midian. Gideon sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim saying, Come down against the Midianites and capture the waters against them as far as Bethbara and also the Jordan. So all the men of Ephraim were called out and they captured the waters as far as Bethbara and also the Jordan. And they captured two princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb. Then they pursued Midian and they brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon across the Jordan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now pray responsively by the whole verse, Psalm 144. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My hope, my fortress, my stronghold and deliverer, my defender and my trust, who subdues the peoples under me. O Lord, what is man that you have shown such respect to him, or the son of man that you so regard him? Man is like a thing and not. His time passes what they want to share. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth your lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and consume them. Send down your hand from above. Deliver me and take me out of the great waters from the hand of strangers. Whose mouth talks of vain things, and whose right, right hand is the right hand of falsehood. Our second reading comes from the sixth chapter of Ephesians, beginning with the tenth verse. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And they were on the road, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, And they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand, and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You did not know what you were asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand, or at my left hand, is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. pray. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together to worship you, to remember those who have given all in the service of this country. Lord, I pray that they would rest in your perpetual light, that they would enjoy you forever. Lord, I also pray for this morning that the principles that we learn from the warrior Gideon and um, uh, the life that he lived, I pray that you would help uh, inspire us and to help us to Um, learn from those principles. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. So on February 8th, 2012, I raised my right hand and I said, I, Stephen Abbott, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to the regulations and the uniform code of military justice. So help me God. So ever since civilization began, ever since governments have been governing, we've had militaries. We've needed militaries uh, in order to keep peace and to keep borders safe and to keep everyone, you know, safe, right? And so this oath-taking has been going on forever. From the very beginning, people have had to take oaths to defend their country. You don't really want somebody in your army unless you can trust them. 
And one of the ways we know we can trust them is that they've made a promise. They've made a pledge that we can trust them. And so this oath-taking was also common in the Roman Empire. In the Roman Empire, it was actually called the Sacramentum uh, Militare. And if that sounds familiar to you, sacrament is what we're going to be talking about this morning. Baptism is also a sacramentum, which is our pledge to God. But it's more importantly, his pledge to us. And so when a soldier came in, he would make his pledge, and then he would be part of their military. They could trust him. He was expected to abide by their code of conduct as a, as a military man. It's appropriate because today, the sacrament, um, in the sacrament, God is making a pledge to us. We respond through his instituted means and make a pledge to God. So this morning, I had the privilege of baptizing little baby Gideon. And, uh, you know, it's always fun to do baptisms. And uh, this morning, we got to do that. But this morning, we won't be doing another baptism, sadly. Although, if anybody here wants to get baptized, let me know. Maybe we can do something last minute. Um, but we will be doing communion, which is the same, has the same uh, purpose. It is our pledge to God. And it's also God's pledge to us. It is a sacrament. So a sacrament is not all about what we do. We cannot baptize ourselves, uh, nor can we give ourselves Holy Communion. Um, a sacrament is all about what God does for us and in us. It's all about the work of God. So there's no way that I, um, you know, can baptize myself. It is all the work of God. One of the things that we can always rest assured, in, uh, assured of is that if we come to baptism— and our pastor baptizes us, and we find out later that he's a heretic, and a liar, and a thief, and a drunkard, and everything else you can imagine under the sun, your baptism is still, is still valid. Not because of that minister and his righteousness, but because of the work of God through the sacrament of baptism. The same thing with the sacrament up here at the table. When you come up to receive Holy Communion, you're not going to receive Holy Communion because of my righteousness, thank God. Um, you're receiving the sacrament based on Christ's righteousness and what he has done. So you receive benefits, you receive promises, all these things you receive because of grace, because of God's unmerited favor toward you as a sinner. So today we are honoring our service members who gave everything in defense of our country, those who never made it back home. And we also celebrated the baptism of Gideon this morning. While we remember all of this, we remember our service members who pledged everything. It's, it's almost as if when you join the military, you're giving the government a blank check. I will pay everything up to my own life. When you, when you become a member of the military, you are deciding at that moment when you sign, and you know, people talk about signing the dotted line, right? Um, when you do that, you have decided that if they send you anywhere, you're going to have to serve even to the point of death. One of the reasons why Father Henry and I were talking last night, one of the reasons he loves the military so much, and one of the reasons he loves, you know, sometimes people worry about church and state, right? Like, maybe you shouldn't wear that uniform up there preaching. Well, one of the things he loves so much is that the, the greatest sign of love is Jesus dying on the cross, right? Now, the greatest sign of love is that you give up your, your life for your friends. And so, um, for a soldier, that's a great example of that. And over and over again, we're called soldiers by Paul in the New Testament. So I felt it appropriate that we should look at the biblical warrior Gideon today, since we baptized baby Gideon, um, in chapters 6 and 7. So 7 might have seemed long, but just be grateful I didn't do chapters 6 and 7, because that would have been a much longer reading for y'all. But I love the story of Gideon. Um, the story of Gideon, is, he's a real man in a real life situation, and we can learn a lot from what God does through him in that situation. So let's begin by looking at chapter 7 together. Well, 6 and 7. Judges chapter 6 and 7. So some of y'all, you'll have pew Bibles. You can open those up and follow along if you'd like. So baptism, first of all, calls us to renounce the devil and turn to Jesus Christ. So one of the first promises we make when we get baptized is that we'll turn from the devil and follow Jesus Christ. God tells Gideon to tear down his father's altar to Baal. And one of the things I think is important to remember, and especially when you grow up in the Bible Belt, especially like in Texas, for example, it's not you being a Texan doesn't mean you're necessarily a Christian. <laughs> and just because your parents were Bible-believing Christians doesn't necessarily make you a Christian. 
And if your parent was a drunkard or a abuser or a whatever, um, that has no bearing on your life either. It certainly influenced you. There's certainly consequences that you'll have to carry around the rest of your life. But at the same time, when you get baptized, it's a fresh start. You are a new creation in Jesus Christ. And so not uh, in our family or our denomination. So a lot of times people, you need to talk to them, they say, oh, well, I was, I was baptized Roman Catholic, or I was baptized Anglican, or I was baptized Baptist, or I was baptized something. One of the things you have to remember about baptism is that it's not a baptism into a denomination. You're not getting baptized Roman Catholic. When you get baptized, what's happening is you're getting baptized into Christ. You are being put into the body of Christ on earth, his church. And so it doesn't matter what denomination you're in. It's not about denominations. And it's not about, you know, being part of a Christian family even. What's important is when you get baptized that you own that faith for yourself. What kind of altars is the devil, um, what kind of altars has the devil set up that God is calling you to tear down? And in the story of Gideon, he actually goes at night and tears down his father's altar. And I love that, right? He goes and he tears down his own father's altar. And in this society, to dishonor your father was, you could get killed for that. But the problem is the altar wasn't an altar to God. It was an altar to Yahweh. It was an altar to Baal. And so he goes and he tears down this altar to Baal that his father had set up, or at least maybe his father's father had set up. And so the villagers get mad because one of the things you have to understand in this culture is Baal was the god of fertility. If you wanted to have kids, you would pray to Baal. If you wanted to have a uh, really abundant crop for the harvest, you would pray to Baal. Baal was like the rain god, the the god who would bring uh, fertility to the land. And so by coming and tearing down that altar, in, in essence, what he was saying to that village that he, was, that he was in was, you are not going to be able to worship this God anymore, and you're going to have to find another way <laughs> to find fertility. You're going to have to find another way to grow your crops. So obviously the village gets really mad, and they all decide, we're going to kill Gideon for that. Like, how dare he tear down our altar to Baal? Well, his father actually defends him, which is a, really a miracle. And sometimes, you know, in our own lives, our fathers seem to be worshiping other gods and following after other gods, but God will work in their hearts. And maybe it was just Gideon having the tenacity and the courage to stand up against Baal worship in, in his village. And his dad, his dad stood up for me. He said, if Baal is really a god, then Baal will defend himself. Gail can, or Baal can take care of Gideon. But nothing happens to Gideon, so obviously, <laughs> obviously Baal wasn't, uh, wasn't a problem. Some altars seem impossible to tear down, but we can tear them down with God's help. God brings us into a new family. He gives us new commandments uh, in the Old Testament, but he also gives us the Beatitudes in the New Testament. He gives us, most importantly, the fruit of the Spirit in the New Testament. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. If you don't know those, memorize them. They're good. <laughs> They're really essential to the Christian life. And the second point. Baptism calls us to renounce the empty promises and deadly deceits of the world and receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Bible. Gideon sees the angel of the Lord, but continues to doubt God. Before the angel appears, a prophet had come, and the prophet said that God had delivered you from Egypt, and now you're turning to idols. But the people didn't listen to the prophet, so God comes himself. He comes down himself to his people as the angel of the Lord. And whenever you see the angel of the Lord, not just an angel, but the angel of the Lord, something important is going on. Some people think that it's actually a, a Christophany, an appearance of Christ in the Old Testament, which is really, really cool. So whenever I see that, I get super excited to see what that angel is doing. And so he comes and he talks to Gideon. One of the things I love is he actually greets him by saying, hey, mighty warrior, which is awesome because he hasn't done anything yet really. He hasn't really done anything to earn that title. One of the things that happened at your baptism is you might not have done anything yet for God. I mean, especially if you get baptized as a, as a baby like we do in our church. Like, if you get baptized as a baby, you cannot have done anything to earn that. But it is all the promises of God, all the unmerited favor of God. He is the one that makes us a mighty warrior on behalf of Christ. Nothing we can do to earn it. 
So God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Gideon asks for signs to make sure that he can trust God. The first thing that the angel does is he takes uh, his staff and he, he puts it on, he, he points at a rock and makes the rock burst into flames and it consumes the offering of Gideon. But that's not enough for Gideon, apparently. <laughs> I, I would think that, I would hope that would be enough for me to believe that he's really the angel of the Lord, you know, sent from God. But um, apparently he wants more signs. So then there's the, uh, the fleece, right? So you have the fleece that's wet and then it's dry and then it's dry and then it's wet and then the ground is dry and the ground is wet. So he does all these Basically, he wants magic, like a magic tr- show from God. Like, show me all these signs, and then I'll believe you. So over and over again, he's, a- he's asking for signs. Because what he's, his problem is, he's looking at the Old Testament, and he's like, you delivered us from the Egyptians. You did all this stuff in the Old Testament. Where are you today? The Midianites are coming in. My family is starving. We're hungry. All these bad things are happening. But where are you now? And in our own life, we receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Bible. Guys, faith is not about some strange thing that you conjure up on your own. Your faith is based on real events and real history and real time that happened to real people from a real God who is really alive, who really wants you to be saved. Like, it's, it's not something that you just come up with. Like, if you put your faith in a flying spaghetti monster, you're not going to be saved. It just doesn't work that way. So, continuing on to my third point. Baptism calls us to renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw us from the love of God and obediently keep God's holy will and commandments. God will put us in positions where we have to humble ourselves and trust and obey him instead of trusting in our own abilities or resources. Now Gideon must have been a man of resources because his father was the man who built the altar in his town to Baal. He must have been a very powerful, influential man. And the fact that he gets 22,000 men— Now, guys, in the army today, if you have 800 to 1,000 people, that's like a battalion. You're you're a battalion commander. He had 22 of those. That's like a, that's like a, I don't even know, commander of the army. Like 22,000 people is a lot of people. So you're, you're handling huge, huge numbers of forces. So he was a man of influence. He was a man of means. But God looks at his 22,000 men and he says, nope, that's not how you're going to win this battle. Then he he, he goes down to 10,000 men. Still, nope, that's not how you're going to win this battle. Then he goes down to 300 men. And he says, take these 300 men and win this battle. But it's not going to be you winning the battle. It's going to be me winning the battle. And God will often strengthen our faith when we need it most. One of the things that I like about this story too is um, Gideon likes to, he has moments of, of faith, lacking faith, wobbly faith. And in our Christian life, we have times of wobbly faith too. And that's why Gideon's asking for signs, right, in the beginning. And then the Lord gives him kind of a, a little, hey, I know your faith is weak. I know you don't think you can beat them with 300 men. But go down and listen to what they're saying in the camp. So he goes down and he listens to the Midianites, and the Midianites are saying, I saw this vision of this barley loaf coming down and crashing and smashing our tents, right? Which is really weird. But, <laughs> but the barley loaf points to Gideon, It points to his situation because all they had to eat was barley. And if you guys have ever eaten barley loaf before, it's not very tasty. It's like the worst kind of bread you can eat. Yeah, it's nasty. So, but because the Midianites had eaten all the other food, all that was left was barley. So it was a symbol of Gideon. It's a symbol of these Israelites rising up from their oppression. And so this barley loaf comes and smashes down and it's a sign to him that he's going to have the victory. So God gives him this gives him this ability to go down and listen, like sneak down to the camp and hear what the enemy is saying. And so he goes down and he hears that. We will, we will defeat the devil, the world, and the flesh when we turn, and trust our, turn our trust over to him and obediently keep his will and commandments. One of the things in our Christian life is we, we think that we can do it on our own. The devil gets into our head all the time. If I just try harder, if, if, I just, if I'm just a better person. God didn't come to make you a better person. He came, to, he came to make you a saved person. You can never be a good enough person to be saved. And so it's important for us to recognize in the gospel, this message of salvation is based on not our works, but on Christ's work on the cross, which we receive in baptism and the Lord's Supper. These things are instituted means for us to enjoy the benefits of, to participate, as Paul talks about, in the body and blood of our Lord. And so, 
Our conclusion is this. God has pledged himself to us through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and, and uh, through his death on the cross. And he is calling us to pledge ourselves fully to him. God gave himself completely on the cross. Sometimes we think of Jesus as like a whipping boy, right? Like poor Jesus got beat up for us on the cross. You cannot divide the Trinity. It's also Trinity Sunday, by the way. It's Memorial Day, Trinity Sunday, and we had a baptism. So it's kind of hard to keep track of everything going on. But (laughs) it is Trinity Sunday, by the way. When Jesus died on the cross for your sins and for my sins, the Father and the Holy Spirit also were suffering. They were feeling what Jesus was going through. It wasn't like God had just turned an eye and, and left his son on the cross. He was fully experiencing everything that the son was experiencing. The Trinity cannot be divided. And so in our life, we can look at Jesus and his pledge to us on the cross. He was willing to give everything to die for us. And so we can turn to him and give him our pledge that we will entrust ourselves completely to him. We'll pick up our cross. We'll follow him. We will die for him. That's what a true pledge is. That's what baptism really means. It's not, it's not so much about what you can do for God. It's what God has done for you and you accepting that by faith with thanksgiving. And so are you allowing altars for the devil to remain in your life? Sexual immorality, pornography, all these things in our world today that are so prevalent, addiction, drugs, alcohol, it's things that are crippling families, crippling individual lives. Are you allowing those things to have a foothold in your life that can keep you from enjoying the abundant life that God has for you? God will help you. God will give you a community to help you through your addiction and through your, your troubles if, if you'll just turn to him. Are you doubting that God still has work to do in your life? Are you looking at the Old Testament saying that's not for you today? Are you looking at the New Testament saying that's not for you today? God still has work to do today. We are the New Testament church. It didn't stop in the book of Acts. It continues today. Are you trusting in your own strength and resources more than the power of God? Are you getting up every morning trying to be a better person? (laughs) Or are you leaning into the strength of God, the Holy Spirit to empower you to do the work of God? to change yourself, to become a new creation in Christ. So I'll leave you with those final questions to think about. Um, Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for everyone gathered here. Lord, I pray that we would look at your sacraments as what they are, a gift that we must accept and open and enter into with our lives. Lord, as we approach your table this morning, as little Gideon and his family celebrate his baptism, I pray that you would watch over them that you would empower them, that you would help them to be good parents, to raise him in Christ. And I pray also that you would help us to continue the walk in our baptism, to continue the walk in in your gracious gift through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have gathered to worship God, offer our thanksgivings, and especially our heart for those who have given their lives for this country. We have heard God show up and sensed Him showing up through the Scripture and the Holy Spirit in our hearts, and now we have a chance to respond with a profession of faith, our prayers, and confession of our sin. If the words of the Nicene Creed are the words of your heart, then let us say together, we believe in one God, the the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one one being being with the Father. Father. Through Through him all things were made. For us us and for our salvation, salvation. he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary Mary, and was made man. For our our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and, and his, his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And ask that God may give us peace for the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give us peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. May God give peace. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatred of humanity. May God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers, who seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military, and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. For the light of his presence to shine on the sick, the weak, and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. Especially George Bays, Ashley Chandler, Barbara Chandler, Don Craig, Glenda Cumbest, B.D., Jane Fortner, Dixie Haketon, Sandra Hyde, Carol Custer McDonald, Rita Revis, Russ Sarkis, Sc Scout Pullen, and also we pray for Father Henry this morning as he's away from worship. We pray to the Father. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honor the past, may we put our faith in the future. For you are the source of life and hope now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of this world, its pride, its sinfulness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our, our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The risen Lord came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Hallelujah. God's peace, buddy. Please be seated for.
prayers and announcements and uh, intermission time, halftime, all that good stuff. Birthday blessings this week for the Christ Church family, <clears throat> Christopher Noy, Griffin Resnick, Clifford McIntyre, Mark Brown, Patrick Mitchell, Bruton Boucher, Carol Jacobs, Lee Scarber. Let's pray together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide in all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for those celebrating a wedding anniversary this week, Lee and Melanie Crump, let us pray. O oh God, you have so blessed the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessings upon these, your servants, that their lives together may continue to reflect your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rip, take it away. All right. Good morning. I got a lot of announcements this morning. I'll get through them as quickly as possible. Welcome. If you are a guest, we are so glad that you're here. Teen Challenge guys, we love that you're here. Please feel free to make this your home. If you need anything, um, there's a card right in front of the seat back in front of you. Fill it out. We'd love to get in touch with you or contact you or let you know what's going on. Challenge guys, a round of applause. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, so here's what we have going on this week. Tomorrow we will not have our morning Bible study um, because it is Memorial Day. So we're going to take that day off. But Tuesday morning, the men's study at 630 is on. And a reminder that there will be no Wednesday night except for the youth because we're taking a break for the summer. And next week is next Sunday will be Founders Day celebration. It'll be a combined service potluck afterwards. Um, so there will not be any Sunday school classes and just one service next week. And then a couple of announcements for Diane. Diane would like everyone, everyone who's sitting in here, to come out to the Popsicles at the park this Friday from 10 to 1115 at Graffa Park. There's information outside for all of these announcements from Diane. Let's pack the park like we did with a baseball game. We had 100 people there. Let's get 100 people to the park and welcome the neighborhood and love on kids. Also on June 9th, Diane is needing some more volunteers for God's Creation Water World Day. All you really need to do is watch kids and make sure you, they all stay safe, which is important. You want them to stay safe. Show up at 1230 and it ends at 3. See Diane for more information. And finally, if anyone's got a cool vehicle, which is not mine, my truck doesn't qualify. Um, if you have one, we are going to have Cruising at Christ Church on the car show on June 19th. Contact Diane for more information. And I think Jonathan's got a couple of more things. Sure. Thank you, Rip. Um, <clears throat> special prayer concerns this week. All of our prayer concerns every week for those named in the prayers of the people by Stephen are important. But especially this week, we've got uh, wonderful Thanksgiving news that little Scout Poland has, she's like this tall, has pulled through her surgery to fix her uh, tummy muscular area, and uh, she is doing great. So thank you for your <laughs> thank you for your prayers there. Uh, Carol Custer McDonald, known and beloved for many decades to many in this church, um, has received news that her cancer is everywhere now, and uh, they are faced uh, with making end-of-life decisions. It is time to uh, gather around and, and visit or inquire uh, with sensitivity and, and brevity uh, as she is in Midland Memorial Hospital, so please pray for her, especially this week. Christ Church will celebrate two funerals this weekend, one here for Margaret Wallace, uh, on Saturday, and then uh, Jane Fortner is putting her daughter Kathy to rest in Abilene at the same time. We will put out an announcement about those uh, services and know that if you uh, can't make it to Abilene, we will be hoping to have a memorial service here at Christ Church for Jane in honor of Kathy, her daughter. 
we said that we would name uh, those uh, servicemen and women who have lost their lives or are missing in action. Uh, Henry, when he went home uh, very ill this morning, uh, happened to have that list in his pocket. So we apologize for not being able to name those servicemen and women. They will be named at next week's 1045 service for sure. Let us take a moment now and pray silently for those who have given their lives. And if you have someone in family or friendship that you know has given their life, please feel free to name them aloud. Father God, we thank you yet again for this sacrifice, Lord, which frankly is so hard to even imagine, and yet for this pledge that so many have given that Stephen talked to us about, Lord, we thank you for the example of Jesus who laid down his life for his friends. And for those who have laid down their lives that we may sit here this morning and worship in freedom and in safety, away from harm, away from terror, we thank you, Lord. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us give a round of applause to a beautiful music ministry this morning. And finally, uh, communion. Communion. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and receive that mystery of his presence in the bread and wine of communion, please come forward and receive. Doesn't matter your background, denominational thing, whatever it may be, this altar is open. This fellowship meal is open to you. Uh, If you'd like to come forward for just a blessing, cross your arms and we will pray a blessing over you. Since the bride's side is so heavy this morning, as compared to the groom's side. Y'all can come forward uh, for communion at this aisle, or if you'd like to filter around and also come around that side aisle too, that's okay. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
Is the Father with us? Yes. Is Christ among us? Yes. Is the Spirit here? Yes. This is our God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we are his people. We are redeemed. And so lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks to Christ. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise. Loving Father. For by the sacrifice of your Son on the cross, all who turn to him in the tribulation of war will find their peace with him in paradise. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Please kneel or be seated as you prefer. Almighty God, we thank you for giving up your son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us and upon these gifts as we remember him in the way he commanded through this bread and this wine. On the same night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. His body was broken for us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is dead. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Lord. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray together. There we go. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the nation and all her people unity, peace, and concord, and to the church and all God's servants life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us say together, when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. And as you go out of here, please keep Father Henry in your prayers. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.